Hi, I'm Louise Elizabeth and welcome to Every Bit Helps. Today I'm going to be taking you through a beginner's guide to buying and storing Bitcoin on blockchain in 2019. And I hope you enjoyed this video today and if you do then please give me a like as it really helps me to grow my channel and understand what kind of content you enjoy. And if you do like it and you feel that others may benefit then please feel free to share. I've also written this down in a step-by-step -step guide, which is available on my website at www.everybithelps.co.uk. So maybe you're new to Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, and you're not too sure where to start or how to buy your very first Bitcoin. Well, what I'm gonna to do today is take you through the entire process from creating your very first wallet all the way through to buying your Bitcoin on blockchain.com. Blockchain.com, who are formerly Blockchain.info, is one of the most popular and well-trusted online wallets. Now, there are other wallets out there, such as the likes of an Exodus or Jax, or you can also use Coinbase to buy, sell, and manage your cryptocurrencies. I've actually created tutorials for those too, so if you'd like to take a look at those, then please look through the series of these videos. And I actually used blockchain for one of my very first Bitcoin buys, along with Coinbase. And one of the great things about it is the fact that you can purchase with the likes of a credit or debit card. And as I previously mentioned, blockchain is very well known and one of the most trusted crypto wallets. They've got over 38 million wallets. They've transacted $200 billion. And they also boast to have the lowest fees in the industry. And their wallets are completely free, which you can actually create from the blockchain.com website or you can simply log in if you already have an existing account. But what we're going to do today is create our very first wallet. So what I'm going to do is click on to get free wallet. And to create a new wallet, the first thing you need to do is go through and put in your email address. So I'm just going to type that in now. And it's quite important to try and have a medium or strong password just so that no one can actually get into your account. You then need to ensure that you have read and agreed to the terms of service and privacy policy and click on the checkbox and create, create my wallet. So my wallet has been successfully created and what I'm gonna do now is I've received an email in my email account. So I'm just gonna show you that. And as you can see, I've received an email asking me to verify my email address. So I'm just gonna click onto that email and it's informing me that thank you for creating a blockchain wallet, verify your email, below to complete your setup. So you'll see that I can then confirm that this is my email and it will also show me my wallet ID. Now this wallet ID here is almost like your username or your credentials to log in. So you need to keep this safe to yourself. You mustn't share this, otherwise essentially someone may be able to actually get into your account along with obviously your password as well. Now the reason why I can share this with you today is the fact that I won't actually have any funds within this wallet. It's literally just here for today in terms of me creating this tutorial. But this is like your user ID, so make sure that you keep this somewhere safe. You, you know, keep it offline, store it in a safe, just keep it somewhere personal to you that no one else can get access to. So I'm just gonna verify my email. And my email's been verified and it's asking me to return to the previous tab to access my blockchain wallet. But what I'm gonna do is just show you simply how to log in from now on. So from the blockchain.com website, make sure that you do bookmark this and you are actually using the verified address so that you're not being putting in your credentials into the incorrect address. And we're gonna click on to login. So in here, like I said, that wallet ID is like your credentials or your username. So we need to put in our wallet ID and then we just need to put in the password that we supplied earlier. Now, sometimes you will have to authorize your email. So it's asked me to check my email box. I need to authorize my login. So now we're actually within our blockchain wallet and the first thing that we see is the dashboard. So that's the very first one, it's like your home screen. So on here you can do several things. You can send and you can request crypto and I'll be taking you through those options shortly. You can view your total balance if you had one in here. Obviously we've just created this so there isn't a current balance in here. We can then view our total, so that will show us by each different type of cryptocurrency that is available within blockchain. And we can also track how the price of Bitcoin, for example, is tracking. And just taking you through this left-hand side here at the moment. So at the moment we're in the dashboard, and if we then go on to buy and sell, so I'm gonna be taking you through this shortly again. So this will be where we actually buy our very first Bitcoin. You then have a swap, 
So swap is almost like a simple exchange. So there are different ways that you can exchange crypto. So if, say for example, you wanted to, you had some Bitcoin and you wanted to try out some Ether, you can simply swap Bitcoin for Ether using blockchain.com. Now, if you were interested in other altcoins that aren't available on blockchain.com, you'd want to use something like an external um, exchange, such as the likes of Binance or Bittrex. I do have videos for those as well. Um, they are available in this series of these videos. Um, I'll also put it in the top right hand corner now so that you can have a look at those other options that are available. And the different types of wallets that you have and different types of cryptocurrencies are USD packs. Now, USD packs is one of their newest features or newest currencies that they have available on their site. And for those of you who aren't aware what USD packs is, it's a type of stable coin. So it's paid one to one with the US dollar. Um, it allows you to hold a stable digital dollar in your blockchain wallet. And you can send USD, uh, sorry, you can send USD packs from here or into this wallet just simply by using send and request. Again, I'll be taking you through that. Then we have Bitcoin. So Bitcoin um, has always been with blockchain. Previously, they used to just kind of, blockchain used to just have the big two cryptocurrencies, which were Bitcoin and Ethereum. Since then, they've actually kind of diversified that a little bit and, and establishing new coins within their wallet. So now we have the likes of Bitcoin Cash and we have Stellar and obviously we have that USD Pax as well. So if you don't have cryptocurrency or if you don't have Bitcoin, for example, within your wallet, then you can buy it from this screen and you can also swap. So if you had Ethereum and you wanted to swap to BTC, then we can do that. And the same applies for Ethereum and the same applies for Bitcoin Cash and so on and so on. Now, you also have this section named hardware. Now, in relation to hardware, you actually need to have a hardware device to be able to use this section. Now, one of the great things about a hardware wallet is the fact that you are securing your crypto offline and keeping it another step away from hackers. So you can use two different types of hardware wallets with blockchain.com. They are the Ledger Nano S and blockchain's very own lockbox. So with the Ledger Nano S, if you haven't heard of that before, again, I've created videos for this. Um, I've also got a link in the summary below where you can go through and you can purchase that securely if you want to. With regards to Blockchain Lockbox, that's their new device that they have available and you can buy it, purchase that from the Blockchain website. Now I'm actually going to create a separate video of how you connect up your Ledger Nano S to hardware. So we're just going to move away from that for the moment and just really focus in on the Blockchain wallet. So now if I just take a look at the Security Center. So in here, it allows you to do different things. So at the moment, we can see that we have verified our personal email. So we did that when we went into my Gmail account earlier on, and we can change our email in here as well. You also have two-factor authentication. So you can put in an extra layer of security using the blockchain wallet. So what the two-step verification does is it provides you with a one-time code or a one-time password so that every single time you're logging in, you have to be with, for example, your mobile phone. So it's just making sure you are the person that is logging in to your blockchain wallet and you can enable it from here. So that can be done via authenticator apps, via um, SMS codes, etc. Now, the next section we're going to go to is the backup recovery phrase. Now, this is a really important part of the settings within blockchain wallet. And the reason why that is, is the fact that if, for example, you forget or you lose your password, they don't store it within blockchain.com. So essentially, you're not going to get it. So what they use instead is something called your backup recovery phrase. And what you need to do with these is, if I just click onto this now, and go to backup funds. What they want you to do is they provide you with 12 words. And what you need to do is you need to write those down in order. So this backup phrase also contains all of your private keys within your wallet. So it's a way that you can store your wallet and access your funds. Now, the reason why I can share these with you today is the fact that again, this is uh, just a test account. You do not wanna be sharing any of your backup phrases with anybody else 
keep it in a safe, keep it offline, keep it personal to you. Because essentially, if someone gets access to these backup recovery phrase, they will have access and control over your assets. So you would go through and you would click on the next four words, so on and so on and so on until you complete all those 12 words. And you could then back up so that if you do lose your password, can't remember it, whatever, then you can use this phrase. I'm just gonna take you through the advanced section now. So in the advanced section, you can change your password so that if you aren't happy with your initial one and you wanna change it, or if you regularly update your passwords, you can do this in this advanced section. You can also set up second passwords. You can ask for it to remember your two-step uh, verification and you can do IP whitelists. Taking a look at the settings now. So at the moment we're under the general tab. So in here we see our wallet ID. Now this address is obviously, like I say, it's your credentials. It's not the addresses that you'll use to send or receive any of your cryptocurrencies. We can also um, pair up a mobile phone. So it is available, um, blockchain.com is available via the App Store or on Google Play. So you can kind of have real time access on, you, on the go as you're out and about. You can view your balances within blockchain on your phone. You can also have the ability to view the privacy policy, terms of service, and a bit of information about the company. Taking us to our profile, within the profile you have daily limits. So at the moment I have verified my email only. If I then provide um, my name, my date of birth, and my address, then I can unlock to the silver level and get $1,000 of allowance in the day. If I then want to you know, be having an awful lot of uh, limits and go for the 25,000, then I can go to gold level. And at that point, I need to provide my government issued ID and portrait photo. One of the other th great things about if you do validate your account to the gold level is the fact that you can get some free crypto. So I've actually, again, I've created another video where you can get $50 of XLM or Stellar as it's known for free if you do validate your account up to that gold level. It's as a separate tutorial, so what I'll do is I'll put it in the top right hand corner now. Under the preferences we have, you can put in your mobile number, you can change the wallet language. So at the moment I've got it set to English, but there are a whole host of different languages in here that are available. And you can change your local currency. So automatically, it set this to be US dollar. However, I can change this to another currency if I wanted to. You can get notifications so that when you receive Bitcoin, you'll be notified via email or SMS. And another handy thing they have in here is the auto logout. So it will log you out automatically after a period of, for example, 10 minutes when this amount of time can be changed. There is also a sign up button in the top right hand corner here. So just ensure that once you finish using your wallet, you do sign out of your account. And if you're not happy with their look and feel in terms of the colors and things like that, you can change the theme. We'll just have a look at wallets and addresses under the settings section. Under Bitcoin wallets, you can categorize things. So you could say, for example, Everything that's coming from a certain address, I want to categorize this to be exchanges. So anything that I'm receiving from an exchange, I can categorize it. You are your own bank, so you just want to ensure that your transactions are clear for you to be able to understand what transactions are coming from where, etc. And you can also import Bitcoin addresses. So one of the good things about this is the fact that if, for example, you have the likes of an Exodus wallet and you want to view your available funds within your blockchain wallet, you can import a Bitcoin address. Now, again, I've created a separate tutorial for this. It's more of an advanced function, but what I'll do is I'll put it in the top right hand corner so that you can view that if you do want to import balances and view that from another wallet. But what we're going to do now is we're going to buy our very first Bitcoin. So what I'm going to do is click on to buy and sell. Now this option of buy and sell isn't available to every single country. So first of all, it's asking me which country I'm in and I'm in the UK. So to get started, the first thing we need to do is create and verify our account in a matter of minutes. We'll need email, personal info and some ID. So I'm going to click on to continue. The next set of information that I'm being asked for is the likes of my country, the fir my first name, my last name, date of birth, address details and postcode, and then I can click on to continue. 
And the next step is confirming that it's you. So you need to provide either a government issued passport, driver's license or national identity card. Click on to continue. It then asks once I've got my identity ready, where, that, where the document's country is from. What type of document it is. And then click on to start. Now the next thing you'll be asked to do is provide photographs of those different types of documents. So you need to allow that your camera is available from your computer and you also need to then provide those photographs. Now I'm not going to take you through that obviously for privacy reasons. So I'll just go through that stage now and then we'll go through to actually buying our first Bitcoin. So now that we've validated our account, we can now go through and buy our very first Bitcoin. So the first thing you need to do here is put in the amount that you would like to purchase in Bitcoin. Now you can also see that you have a real time conversion in terms of how much a Bitcoin is actually worth in pounds. So here today you can see that my Bitcoin is worth £6,915.90. So in here I can type in the amount that I'd like to purchase. So I'm going to type in £100. And what it does is it provides me with that Bitcoin conversion for me. So it tells me how much Bitcoin I'm going to get for my £100. And then once I'm happy with that, I just then click on to continue. So next up, you select your payment method. So you can either make your payment via bank transfer or via credit or debit card. Now with the bank transfer, you do receive your Bitcoin in two to three days and you only have to pay a 0.2 for percent payment fee. However, with your credit or debit card, you receive your Bitcoin instantly. There is a 3% convenience fee and you can pay with either Visa or MasterCard. Now, one thing to make you aware of, when I actually made my very first Bitcoin buy, I thought I'd be a little bit cheap and wasn't in any rush to get my Bitcoin. Thought I'd wait two to three days and only have to pay 0.25% payment fee. Unfortunately, now other different banks may vary. However, I'm from the UK and I actually got hit with a £25 international banking charge. And that was because the bank for blockchain was over in Denmark, I believe. So I thought I'd save myself and having to pay that 3%. Um, and instead, I actually got hit with £25. So um, for an amount of £100, instead of paying £3 with the credit or debit card, I actually ended up paying it. £25 plus that 0.25% fee as well. So not fantastic, but something to be aware of. In the meantime, I then found another way that I could actually reduce the fees that I was paying by using something called Revolut. I have done the whole process in a tutorial. I'll put that in the top right hand corner now so that you can take a look and see if that process works for you. But once you've selected the different type of payment method, um, what you now need to do is confirm your order. So it's telling me the exchange rate that I'm getting here today. It's telling me how much a Bitcoin is worth. It's telling me the purchase that I'm making. It's then saying minus that transaction fee. It's then telling me the amount that I receive. So that transaction fee is obviously 3% and then it's showing me in Bitcoin rather than in, in pounds. So the amount that I'm buying is 100 pounds. And then with that payment fee, I'm looking at £103. And then what I would do is, you know, obviously agree to the terms and conditions here. And then I would click on to submit. And then we're nearly there. So now it's asking me to put in my card details. So I need to put my cardholder's name in here, my card number, the month and year of the expiry and the CVB code, which is the last three digits on the back of your card. And then it's confirming those amounts again. So the amount that I'm purchasing, the total cost that it's gonna cost me, and then it's telling me my transaction time, how long it will take for that transaction to go through. And this quote is only actually valid for a certain period of time. And it tells me in that top right hand corner there, how soon it will be until that quote is refreshed. So what you're doing at this point is locking in that Bitcoin price. Um, after a certain period of time, if you haven't gone through this, then you will need to go through the process again. Once you're happy to go through, you can click on to continue. And your Bitcoin will then appear in your Bitcoin wallet. And another way to get cryptocurrency into your wallet is to request it or to receive it. So I'll show you how to trans transfer, um, for example, Bitcoin or Ethereum into your wallet. So there's different ways that you can get to this request button. So as you can pretty much see, it is available in all of your wallets. It's also available from that dashboard as well. So I'm going to click on to request. 
So maybe you have, for example, some cryptocurrencies on an external exchange and you want to transfer it across into your wallet. Now, the reason why you may want to do this is the fact that best security practices state that you shouldn't leave your crypto on an exchange. Basically, you don't have access to your private keys, so you have less control over your assets. And an exchange is a lot more likely to get hacked because there's so many assets on there and so much money on there. So as opposed to it being on your personal wallet, which you have control over. So the first thing you'd need to do is you'd state which kind of cryptocurrency you want to request or you want to receive. So that may be your Bitcoin, it may be Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Stellar, etc. Then it's asking me where I'd like to receive it to. So at the moment, I just have a Bitcoin wallet. I haven't imported a wallet and I haven't um, imported a hardware wallet either. So it's just coming up with my Bitcoin wallet. Then what it does, it provides me with an address. So this is my receiving address. So this is the address that I would now need to send across to someone else. So what I'm gonna do is click onto this link here. And what it'll do for me is it will copy that address. So I have now copied that address and I can give it to the exchange or I can give it to someone else and ask them to send me some cryptocurrency. I also have this here, which is known as a QR code so that if someone is beside me, I can, instead of having to copy and paste and getting that address correct and exact, you can use a QR code with your mobile phone, which is obviously a lot more accurate. And if you want to send your cryptocurrency, again, for example, to an exchange so that you can start trading with it and exchanging it and all those kind of things or trying out some new altcoins, then you can send from this wallet. So exactly the same as the request button it is available throughout the blockchain wallet. But I'm going to click on to send up here. So first of all, you're saying which currency you want to send. So you have the ability to send the different types of cryptocurrencies. You're then stating where you're sending it from, so which wallet. Then you need to put in what address you're sending it to. Now, one thing to be really accurate with, you need to be really ensured that you're doing something correctly, is when you're putting in the address into here. So it will be a long string of letters and numbers that you will place into here, just like the address that we just copied when we were actually requesting cryptocurrency. This is when we're looking at our, our address. So if, for example, you put in an extra digit and it's incorrect, then your crypto isn't retractable. So once you send out um, your cryptocurrency out of your wallet, if you put in the wrong address, then that cryptocurrency could potentially have gone forever. Again, if you do have the ability to use a QR code, then you can use the QR code that does make it a little bit more accurate. Then you need to put in the amount that you're actually going to be sending. So say, for example, I'm sending $100. It then provides me with the Bitcoin conversion, and that's in real time. It then asks me what my description is. So here is, this is just personal to me. So if I'm sending this over to the Binance exchange, I might want to type in here, give it some kind of description of where I'm actually sending it to or, you know, what this transaction is for. You then have different network fees. So if I use regular, then it is slightly slower than priority. Now at the moment, regular is one hour at the moment or one hour plus, but as the network does get more congested, it can take longer for you know, these transactions to go through. And then you would click on to continue and you'll, you would send your Bitcoin out of your blockchain account. And there are only two other real ways that you can get new crypto into your account. So if you're interested in trying out a new cryptocurrency, for example, you're holding Bitcoin and you want to try Stellar, then you can swap within the blockchain wallet. So at the moment, I've just clicked on to swap and then I'm brought up with this screen. And the first thing it asks me is which cryptocurrency would I like to swap from and to? So I want to swap from Bitcoin and I want to receive Ethereum. So what I'm gonna do is type in the amount. So I can either type in the amount in here of how much I'd like to swap, or I can actually click onto the minimum amount that I have available or the maximum amount that I have available. So I'm just gonna do a very small one here. I'll show you a very small one here. So this is for $6.25. It then provides me with that Bitcoin conversion. It tells me how much I'm gonna be exchanging. It provides me with my network fees. It tells me in total how much I'm actually going to be sending. So that is the exchange amount with adding on the network fees in here. And then it'll tell me how much I'm going to be receiving in Ethereum. 
and you would then click on to exchange to exchange one cryptocurrency for another. And the final way that you can get cryptocurrency into your blockchain wallet is via airdrops. So if you are interested in trying out new cryptocurrencies without spending any money, uh, blockchain, I've also partnered with Stellar Lumens and are giving away free XLM, as I mentioned earlier on, for those people that want to validate their account to the gold level. You've got $50 from blockchain, but also at the same time, Coinbase Earn are actually giving away $50 of XLM as well. Now, with regards to Coinbase, again, I've created a video of how you get that free XLM. There's also other cryptocurrencies available that you can get for free just by completing some quizzes and um, answering some questions. So that pretty much completes my blockchain tutorial update. And if you'd like to see this in a step-by-step -step guide, which will have some further information as well, I'll pop it in the summary below. It'll also be on my website, which is at www.everybithelps.co.uk. And I hope you enjoyed this video today. And if you do, then please give me a like. And if you'd like to see more tips, reviews and tutorials, then please hit subscribe. Thanks, and I'll see you soon.